Cool. Um, actually, before I dive into this, I, I got to remember my uh, order here. I don't want to 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 spend. Uh, I don't want to skip this. So, um, what are we going to look at today? Right, the demonstration environment. What is it? We've just gone through talking about a high-level business proposition uh, that Mark did. We talked about the the features of the product set, which I'll get into, and then Nick just did the deep dive. Uh, fortunately, the way we've designed the system is around operational simplicity. So all of this awesome machinery <laughs> is completely invisible to the user. Um, so our, our environment here is gonna be, a, we're using a Mellanox switch. So uh, big thanks to the guys at Mellanox for dropping one off on Tuesday. Uh, for, you know, <laughs> literally. Uh, if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would ever get done. Yeah, they oh my. a lot of time to get used to it. No, it's great. A 132 port, 100 gig switch, I'm not complaining. Um, and then we've got a uh, five of our flash nodes, the uh, the DF four zero zero fives, and then uh, five of the uh, hybrid nodes. So a mixed cluster. So just a, a shout out to our hardware partners as well. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump into the, the demo. We've designed the system to try to make it as uh, easy as possible to operate and, and to work on because. Fundamentally, the user interface is used when you need it. Most people don't, this is not Facebook, right? You don't spend your time there. <laughs> um, so we've, we've put the uh, capacity in the uh, upper corner, uh, current performance, and then, and then the storage nodes themselves. Um, I, I think this might be a fun time to, to uh, diverge a little bit. So, so bear with me, it's a demo, but we'll, we'll see if it works. Alexa, open Dayterra. Welcome to the Dayterra skills. Get capacity. Current capacity is 260,717 gigabytes with 361 gigabytes in use. So what I just did is using the Lambda infrastructure and a little trick uh, punching a hole in a firewall, um, <laughs> <laughs> sent an API request into the uh, Deterra. Let me mute this so nobody buys any more dog food. Um, <laughs> um, to send the request to the API, make that call, get the response back, and then parse it out. I mean, it, it's really about that operational simplicity. Uh, I've got some other tricks that I can do with that. We'll, we'll see if we uh, get there. So at a high level, if I look at the storage node page here, we've got uh, 10 nodes in this particular environment. You'll see there's not a lot of capacity because I want to be able to remove them while we're here. And so I've kept the sizes a little bit small because data has weight to it. And so just to, to make the demo go a little faster. Um, we also hit a drive failure about an hour ago, which is great because that happens in demos, right? No issues, just keep on trucking. Um, what I'm gonna do just to illustrate the point, point is I'm gonna sort by type. Now we talk about the system being policy driven. We talk about the, uh, the, inf the inside of the box, the proxies and the servers and everything. Um, and fundamentally, the way we think is a node level. Like you asked earlier, Howard, about how we do metadata, all of the nodes themselves are fully independent. So all that metadata is gonna be node local. And, and it just reiterates this ability to, to consume new hardware, new uh, technologies when they become available. Because the one thing we know for sure is that a year from now, there's going to be something else. In two years, it's gonna be something else. We made a comment about the, the SKU reduction, trying to get that uh, the number of SKUs that the customer has to support, they might be able to get one box today, but they'll have to buy a different box in the future. And most of the folks we talk to like to put all the vendors in a room and say, whoever leaves the room with the lowest price gets our business. And so you have those pressures as well. So by designing a software system that can run as software on commodity storage, uh, allow you to bring in new technologies, we really future-proofed the, uh, future the environment. So um, just to go back up to the, uh, the top here, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about delivering low latency. So here you can see we're running about uh, 650, 700,000 IOPS, sub half millisecond, which is not bad for a software. Um, we can get more out of the system, but we figure highlighting the low latency would be a, a good opportunity for this organization, th this group of folks. Uh, it is a read workload, um, but then it's also a demo, so please make it easy. Um, I, I want to jump in and, and discuss um, what we call application instances or the instance page. So we, we've done a lot of discussion about you know, what a volume is in the system. There's an earlier question uh, around the, uh, how we tie back to the applications. And really, this is where, this is where the, the user interaction becomes supreme. And, and we have this concept. Let me scroll down a little bit. These are a lot of um, containers. Um, we have this concept 
of an application instance. If you think about databases, if you think about um, uh, distributed applications like Cassandra, Kafka, and so forth, it's, it's more of a group of resources now working together. In the old Oracle days, we'd have like, uh, you know, 500 gig volumes and we'd have 25 of them and ASM would slather them all together and make our life good. Uh, the way we would capture that in the Deterra model is, is we would actually use this add storage button. And, and what this would end up doing for us is create another presentation of storage. So from a terminology perspective, this, this terminology of, of uh, a storage instance is an IQN, a SCSI <coughs> presentation. So as we extend the, the data fabric and add more protocols, you might have another storage instance type with a different protocol. But because we're in a common framework with common policy, we can bring these things together. And we can present them under a unified view. And we can also apply all the policies to things uh, in regards to things like tenancy and, and all of that uh, good stuff that we talked about before. So you'll see that we have a number of active initiators. This happens to be a VMware share. Um, this is a three copy. You know, we, we talked about being able to support five copy for very high durability. We can also support a one copy volume if that's the requirement, a scratch disk. I know my application is doing the replication. Uh, fundamentally, one of the challenges with the new style applications that replicate themselves is how do you match business logic? Uh, we are working with a customer who deployed two petabytes usable on their Ceph infrastructure running inside HDFS. So that was uh, nine, ter nine petabytes on the floor. Um, they that got through. Their system took it. When they requested five petabytes usable, and someone says, like, why are you, do you need 45 petabytes of running disk again? And it's like, because the, the application was making business logic decisions, and the infrastructure was trying to do it as well, and that became massively inefficient. So on a per volume basis, at that level of granularity, you can choose, do I need to protect this in the system, or is the application going to do it? How much is this worth? Beyond just the use of flash and, and hybrid emplacement, also down to the number of copies. Uh, as I scroll down here, you'll see that we have this, uh, this uh, policy for storage placement. This particular uh, uh, flash system is on uh, one replica flash. Uh, you can see here that I've got a couple listed. Um, these, these two are all flash nodes, and there's an all flash node and some hybrid nodes. The reason why there's more than one node is because of the span map. When this volume was created, because it's a, let me scroll back up here, a uh, two terabyte volume, it's two terabytes divided by 16 gigs, that many spans spread across the system. As capacity fills, we move those things around. But that's what, what drives those different numbers. Uh, just to give an example, and uh, we'll, we'll get into the, the, the fun stuff in just a second. Um, if I open up one of my others, like this, uh, this workload container, uh, and look at its storage placement. This is a much smaller volume. It's 10, ter uh, 10 gigabytes, so it's less than a single span. And you'll see that it's assigned to two hybrid systems. So it's very clear that we present this information. I can go to the storage node page and see it the other way. We can use the API. We'll show that. We can extract it as well. Howard looks like he has a question. You're telling me what nodes it's on, but if it's a hybrid node, I want to know what kind of media it's on to. So the, as, as Ashik was saying, when, the, when it comes to measuring things like uh, cache hit ratios and, and the, the historical performance of the volume, that's where the cloud portal would come in. Okay. To provide that information and with much better granularity there. Yep. So. Um, is it, yeah. All data is destaged from MLC to, to disk? Ultimately, it doesn't actually stay on MLC. Yeah. It's at all Europe, and so at least. If, if it's hot enough, it will. Yeah. De facto, yeah. you know, yeah. will de facto. Yeah. yeah. You know, whether, whether you're thinking of it as a tier or a cache, it, if it's hot, it's going to stay there. 